one thing that medical school taught me is that uh, life is very short and uh, very precious uh, and that you have to make the most of the one you have. I teach uh, narrative medicine at Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons. Uh, I am the only cartoonist in the program that I know of. If you open a textbook, an existing medical textbook, you're going to see a lot of pictures. The, there, there's a lot of visual information that's an important part of what the students learn. Um, you know, the stuff we're talking about in med school is not all, you know, abstract and conceptual. We're, we're talking about anatomy uh, and pathophysiology where the visual information is a big part of what you need to know. You need to know where this organ is in relation to this other organ or how do I identify this disease process? What, what am I looking for? And when I say looking, actually looking. Um, so it's a natural to use a lot of images and then if you're going to tell a story with a lot of images, uh, I think Comics are a great tool for that because instead of having this somewhat choppy experience of, okay, I'm going to read this block of text, see figure 2A, I'm going to look over here, find figure 2A, maybe read another little block of text under that, it's all one integrated experience. The central challenge of, of, of cartooning is not all that dissimilar to one of the central challenges of uh, communicating in, in medicine, which is that you need to process these uh, parallel information streams at, at, at all times. You know, as a cartoonist, you have your words and your pictures, and you have to put them together to tell a single coherent story. Um, if you think about it, it's not all that far from what you're doing from a storytelling point of view when you're dealing with patients because you're thinking uh, in these technical terms, they're thinking in just their colloquial everyday terms. You have to make that one story. Mm -hmm.